It's Saturday morning, and that means it's time for Spartan Nation TV. With me, your host, Hondo Carpenter from SpartanNation.com. Joined by the Duckett Dynasty, legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. Now, it's time for Spartan Nation TV. Good morning, everybody. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter, along with legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. And you may remember on last week's show, <laughs> the great Honda Easy <laughs> made a bet with Tico Duckett for his tie. Let's if Wyoming it. scored 28 points, which he so boldly predicted, I said I would buy him steak and lobster today right after the show. He said, I think they're going to. I said, they won't. <laughs> I got his tie. Thank you, Tico. Yeah, it looks good on you, Hondo. Looks very, very good. And I want to <laughs> tell you, your girlfriend has very good taste. Yes, she does. And yes, she does. was not happy. <laughs> no, she wasn't. I gave her a big hug, and I, I said, you know what he bet me? She goes, I know. I think she's waiting for you outside. Uh, no, I think she's waiting for you. <laughs> well, guys, yeah. Michigan State, we talked about it last week on the show. They came out against a very well-coached Wyoming team, and you could tell it. Those guys were in the right position, but they did not have the horses TJ, is it the best way to say it? They took care of business. They took care of business. The team, Wyoming, was very prepared. They were ready to play, but we did what we were supposed to do. Go in, put up numbers, get some people some playing time, and show that we are focused on this next game. These two men sitting at this table understand what a good running back is, but Tico, you mentioned it. You wanted to see more from Langford? They saw 137 yards. They, they did. Langford surprised me. I think he realized he had a little pressure on his back. Mm -hmm. You know, he knew he had to perform. He knew he had to get to his old self, and, and he did it. Surprising stat so far this football season for me, T.J. Duckett. Michigan State has scored more points now than they did through 11 games last year. That, last season, we couldn't get in the end zone. The defense was doing everything. This season, we've picked up the pace. We've taken the pressure off the defense, which at times has been showing a little bit of weakness, which mm -hmm. I'm sure we'll talk about in a little bit. But right now, to see that offense continually, week after week, put up that, those type of points, that's great to see. Tico, Connor Cook, I mean, there's a lot of talk about him leaving early for the NFL, and there should be. We're going to get into that. Well, let's just talk about sure, it right now. Sure. That touchdown pass to Tony Lippett, they had great coverage, Wyoming did. They had this Tony Lippett bracketed with a safety behind him, sure. quarterback in front of him, about an eight-inch window. When he made that pass, I had an NFL scout text me and say, about 26 starting NFL quarterbacks couldn't have made that throw. Right, and that, that speaks volumes. He, he had a great summer. He, he planned this. He, he had good camps. And now he's showing us what he can do. And against a better team, he just has to do it more often. TJ, yeah. three Spartan quarterbacks played again. Connor Cook was getting replaced in the first quarter. You, you know, I, Tico and I watched the game together. And it's either a great move or it's not. It's a terrible one. I mean, I understand you want to get some people some reps. But the guy, we need our quarterback to get in game shape. We need him to actually get to play a lot. But at the same time, it reminded us of Coach uh, Izzo, get some guys in early. I mean, yeah. maybe then in the season comes, there you might need that have to have that shuffling. But right now, I want to see him play and get ready for this Big Ten season. Absolutely. For years on this show, we have all harped on their lack of developing a backup. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So and it's I, nice to see. And I think that's part of it. You know, he knew he needed to get someone developed, and now he's – He's taking advantage of it. I asked Pat Narduzzi after the game, the MSU defensive coordinator, you know, for seven years, he's had to carry this team. He didn't get to play a lot of guys early mm -hmm. because they had to win games for him. I said, how nice? And he said, oh, yeah, it's <laughs> nice. You can almost hear him sigh of Absolutely. relief. Absolutely. And what I see now is, you know, he has to have this because they're really not that solid on defense. So if he didn't have this, we'd probably be in some trouble and at the end I, of the season. I look at it as we're building a program. We are building a program. Guys come in. They get a chance to play. They get some film to watch and practice. And then they know what it's like to be in that atmosphere in Spartan Stadium. Back at you, Tico, because you just said, you know, we're struggling. We're struggling, but this is still one of the best teams against the rush defensively in sure. the country. I think we were just spoiled last year. Well, I think we've <laughs> raised the bar so high. You know, we have. And, and just to see some of the things that we're expecting them to do, it doesn't happen. And when you look at some of the runs and some of the passes that were dropped against us, could have changed the outcome of some of the, the score. TJ, as I watched the game, though, the thing that impressed me, and Coach Bowl from Wyoming talked about it afterwards, that's a well-coached football team. They are. They, um, they don't make many mistakes. They had a little more penalties this game, but that's the, shuff the shuffling of players. But they sound and gap defense. 
and on the routes that they're running, quarterback knows where the guys are going to be at, so he's able to make that play. We're going to get into more players specifically as we break down offense and defense later in the show. But, Tico, would you agree with that assessment? They're well coached. Oh, very well coached. And, you know, he's a great coach, and what he's done in the past with his other teams is, is going to show for this team in the future. I totally agree. You are watching Spartan Nation TV. When we come back, we turn our attention to the Michigan State defense. MSU Federal Credit Union is a proud supporter of Michigan State University Athletics. On or off the court. MSU Federal Credit Union supports my team. My team. My team. My team. And we just wanted to say thanks. Thank you, MSU FCU. Thanks. Thank you. The right moves can win a game. The wrong move can take you out. Get off the sidelines and back in the game with world-class care from MSU Sports Medicine. Our team of physicians and specialists diagnose and treat athletic and performance injuries. We've expanded our care to include pediatric sports and injuries associated with dance and performing arts. Our team will get you back on track, whatever your game. Call MSU Sports Medicine at 884-6100. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Simple Tea Printing and Embroidery. We make shirts and we give back. Welcome back, Spartan Nation TV. Wow, the things we talk about when we go to commercial breaks. <laughs> All right, boys, let's turn our attention to the Michigan State defense. If you're going to talk about it, let's talk about the safeties. Curtis Drummond, solid NFL player. R.J. Williamson, great kid. Struggling, Tico. He's struggling. You know, he's he's still in the learning process. He's he's what sophomore, mm -hmm. and he's just trying to pick up the D. And you know, the teams are coming at him, so he's not quite ready yet. But he will be, hopefully, by today. TJ, simple question for you. He is a headhunter. He loves to hit. This is an aggressive defense. Is this where maybe them being aggressive hurts because he so goes up to go against the run every time? Guys are beating him on some pass rush. It is, but I think the, the more experience he gets, the better he can read his keys. That's right now, he's seeing, he's seeing the, the play develop, and because he has that, I need to get in there and make a play. Instead of, let me watch the key. Is, is the tight end but staying in the block? Is the tackle? And once he can identify that, then he'll, that extra second, he'll have that recognition of a pass run and make the play. Right back at you, then, let's talk about Ed Davis, another head. Headhunter, a great man. Reminds me a lot of Charles Haley mm -hmm. as a as a rush specialist. But he's getting beat sometimes in pass routes too. Is it the same reason with Davis? I, I think so. And and with those two guys, they're they're fairly new to the whole defensive concept. And our defense is pretty solid. So you have a couple areas as an offensive coordinator that you can key on. And if you can get a play action or if you can get them to bite, just a half a step. That's all it takes to make a play. Do you expect Tico to see more of Riley Bulla, who I think played very well in placing at Davis this sure. week? I think we should expect to see him. I mean, Riley's a heck of a player, and he again is still learning so I, I think we'll see him uh definitely yeah I definitely think so we all know him Tawan Jones the middle linebacker what a terrific <laughs> young man he is yeah. but guys he's struggling at middle linebacker a little bit what did you see from John Reschke I asked uh I asked Narduzzi about it after the game I saw him channeling a little Max Bull on some of his calls I like John you know John is a tough guy he he gets in the position he needs to be in and he makes plays and I, I like him a lot it's big shoes to fill from last year, and they're slowly filling them. Again, early, we have high expectations. We want the, uh, the defense to only give the guy one yard of carry, exactly. two yards of carry. <laughs> no first down. We have, we have high expectations, so as they start to develop in these roles, and we're talking Max Bullo, he was a senior. I mean, he's been, sure. in, he's been through the wash, if you will. So these guys, it's their turn to, to kind of work out some of those wrinkles. It's important when you watch this show to understand something very simple. When we talk about players, it's not personal, but it's giving you in-depth analysis. Tico, you were a captain at Michigan State. Sure. Travis Jackson is a captain. He came back, moved to center, a position he hasn't played in, in quite some time, sure. but four critical penalties. Sure. Do you attribute those to just coming back, or is that mental lapses by the captain? You know, I, I think it's frustration. You know, he's learning a position. He's getting beat a couple times, and I think he's taking it out, and he's not keeping a level head, and it's just pure frustration. I'm going to say it's also the quarterback change. I mean, to have different quarterbacks coming in and out, 
and having to understand the cadence, the feel, having to understand all these things in a new position. That's that's, that's, that's the, the frustration. That's though. the frustration, yeah, but sure. that's also Coach D'Antonio being a mad scientist and using the game as practice. Yes. Yeah. Giving yes. a chance for these players to get that actual game feel. Totally agree. And make these mistakes and understand we're up, we have a chance, all these things. So that's, that's my take on it. Sure. Lip it. Bing Lippet, Lippet. Tony Lippet. <laughs> I mean, this guy, if he actually could play an entire game. Right, right. <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I was going to say. If he could just put full four quarters in there, we'll see a phenomenal I mean, man. already among the nation's elite receivers, and sure. he isn't playing. Well, he grew up, you know. Past few years, he's dropped a few balls, you know, run a few bad routes and didn't make big plays, and now we're seeing the full package. Michigan State a few weeks ago didn't play, moved up in the rankings. They play one huge and fell down a spot, TJ. I don't get it. I, mean, I, <laughs> I don't, get, just, it I don't yeah. get it. I just I that's get. one thing I don't understand. But again, we it's week to week. Let's don't. My let's vote not, moved them up. <laughs> right, right. Let, let's not. Let's worry not look about at the that. numbers yeah, right let's now. Let's not worry about that right now and continue to win games. That's well, it. Let's stay on TJ's thought process. Sure. Michigan State wasn't even ranked last year until the tenth game of the yeah. season <laughs> and finished exactly. third. Yeah. But you know, you have to keep it in the back of your mind. You're trying to shoot for the national champs. You mm -hmm. want a little barometer of where you're at. And so, you know, you look at it, but you don't look at it. And maybe, That's how it, and maybe it even keeps our players a little chip on their shoulder. I mean, just sure. a little bit, because if they are in the top five or whatever right. up there, maybe they do get a little comfortable. Because that is unheard of. You know, you win a game. And, and you go backwards. And you go backwards. And you win big. And you yeah. win big. Yeah. I mean, you win by but again, 42. It goes back to Michigan State. We just don't have that respect yet. Yeah. And that's what it comes down to. It's going to come not just with one year. It's going to be yeah. progressive Multiple. years. Absolutely. All right. I'm going to give you a stat that will probably make both of your chins hit the ground. Connor Cook, if you take out Wyoming, the other three games combined hasn't even played a full game. Mm -hmm. But the Michigan State offense, fifth in the country, over mm. 50 points a game. Tico. I like that. That's what we want to hear because we know a year ago we were struggling. That's and very it, impressive. Exactly. So we, we like to hear that. TJ, I was looking over some of my notes. If I would have told you last year that at this time this year, this, they'd be the fifth-ranked offense in the country, they would score 50 <laughs> points a game, and their starting quarterback would have essentially played two games <laughs> What would you have said? I'd be wearing your tie. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait I'd be wait, wearing wait. your tie. Rudy said he'd be wearing my tie. <laughs> that Amy Joe provided uh, for me. Yeah, that's good. That's yeah, good. Thank you, man. Good, I must yeah. say. Yeah. I want to hear you say, I love fat white people. Uh, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> you got to go Jerry Maguire on me, Tico. Uh, for you now, what did you see against Wyoming that you want to see carried over this week and a much bigger game? Well, I just want to see the sustainability of the first uh, team on offense and defense, just sustain it. We still don't know if we can go full qu four quarters. We only went two quarters with Oregon. So we don't know, can we put a full game together yet? Is that a legitimate question, 10 seconds, that is stamina going to be a question? I think stamina will, may be a question in this game because we haven't put together full four hard quarters. I agree. We'll be right back with more on Spartan Nation TV. Hi, I'm Kevin Witkin, owner of Discount One Hour Signs. We've been proudly serving the Lansing area since 1979. We pride ourselves in producing the best signs at the best prices, fast. From traditional graphics, vehicle wraps, lighted signs, whatever your needs, we do it all. Remember, a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Discount Signs, Lansing's top sign shop since 1979. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at the MSU Federal Credit Union, proud sponsors of MSU Athletics. Welcome back, Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter, with legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. Gentlemen, let's talk about tonight's monster game with the Cornhuskers. We'll start with you, TJ. I think they have the best player in all of college football, Amir Abdullah. He is you as far as his ability to go at people. He is Tico with his ability to run around people. He is a game changer. He's a stud. He is, and he's going to give us some issues. Uh, if we can 
corral him. I'm talking everybody's going to have to tackle this guy. We can't leave him one-on-one. -on -one. We're going to have to corral him, frustrate him, frustrate the offense a little bit because that's their workhorse. And if we can start to do that and get them out of their game having to pass the ball more, we stand a better chance. I know how much you love yourself, Tico, but when you watch <laughs> him play, I think even he has to rival you in your mind. He's not quite there yet. I know, but he'll get there. A few more games, he might get there. You know, but I, think we're, I don't think we're going to be able to corral him. I think we're just going to try to slow him down mm -hmm. and, and leave, leave Connor Cook, put it on his shoulders to win the game for us because I, I can't see us slowing him down. You know, I did multiple interviews all over the state of Nebraska this week on the radio, gentlemen, and everyone wants to talk about the Michigan State defense is not what they were last year, and I totally agree. But let's remember, this isn't the same Michigan State offense. Mm -hmm. I think the question becomes, can the Michigan State defense slow them down enough where they can't keep pace with Connor Cook. Well, if, if we can get some three and outs and then we start putting points up on the board offensively, that's going to take them away from that running game. They're going to have to start to throw the ball, and hopefully by then we're flying around. Plus, yeah. everyone's talking about our, our run defense from the beginning of last week till today. So let's hope that that defense has been hearing that all right. week, and let's focus on this run. You know, I, excuse me, I also feel that Narduzzi has not put his foot down on the pedal yet. Yes. You know, yep. he is not. He's done just enough to do what he needs to do. So we'll see some some upfront moves that we haven't seen all year. Plus being able to get the whole team to play. Right. Yes. That's going to be right. different. Absolutely. Great point. Gentlemen, I don't believe in bulletin board material. I don't think it has as much effect, but I do think it can. Last year, Bo Pelini made this comment after Michigan State beat him. He said, quote, we've run on them before, we'll run on them again, unquote. That quote, since the Rose Bowl ended, has been drilled into the MSU defensive coaches' minds, the players' mind, and I believe football's a game of pride when it's man-on-man. Mm -hmm. man. They've been told by their head coach since the Rose Bowl was over, this guy's telling everyone he's going to run in you again. That's gut check time, isn't it, TJ? It's 100% gut check time, especially what has happened in the last couple of weeks of teams running the ball. So now it's a chance to shut up all the naysayers and to really establish what that defense is going to be like going into the Big Ten. Last year, Michigan State won the game on the schedule. I frankly say that Nebraska lost it more than Michigan State won it. I mean, it made no sense. You and I sure. were laughing about this. Amir Abdullah was running all over the Spartans, and the Husker staff just decided, well, that's working, so we probably shouldn't do it anymore, <laughs> and gave the Spartans a win. That's a, you know, we always criticize players, but how about this Pelini staff, which frankly, over his time in Nebraska, every year seems to cost him one or two games. Sure, and you know, we don't have the answer, but there's something about he may think that he's He's basically overcoaching. That's what I have to say because you're right. Running the ball on us and then switching out of that and, you know, and then we, we're stalling them. Like, you know, I don't know about him. All I got to say is my dad once told me when I liked this girl, he said, son, I think she likes you. Ask her out. And I said, well, dad. And he goes, hey, once you've got it sold, quit asking if they want to buy. <laughs> I'm just saying, if Amir Abdul is running, thank you, Bo Pelini, Absolutely. for that win. Absolutely. We'll be right back. I bet you've got some dreams. My dreams drive my passion to do what I love. To make a difference by teaching others. To make the world a greener and better place. To run my own business. To see where the road takes me. MSU Federal Credit Union offers auto loans to help drive your dreams to reality. We know you've got dreams. MSU FCU can help. The right moves can win a game. The wrong move can take you out. Get off the sidelines and back in the game with world-class care from MSU Sports Medicine. Our team of physicians and specialists diagnose and treat athletic and performance injuries. We've expanded our care to include pediatric sports and injuries associated with dance and performing arts. Our team will get you back on track, whatever your game. Call MSU Sports Medicine at 884-6100. This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Message Makers, creators of experiences that transform. Good morning. Welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm Hondo Carpenter. We're going to throw our first question about the Nebraska defense right at Tico Duckett. Tico. <laughs> okay, nice. Fill me in on the joke. No, no, no. We got you. Oh, my gosh. Shoot. No, what's the joke? Shoot. This is good. All yeah. right, good. See what I have to work Shoot. with. All right. <laughs> First question to you is not about my new tie. Right. First question, though, is about the Nebraska defense. Is the key to them, Michigan State, using the pass 
to set up the run? Because they struggle in sure. pass defense. I think we're going to have to set up the run to set up the pass. I mean, we're, we're, we're a running team, you know, and it's all about establishing the run so the pass opens up. So even though they struggle with the pass, you, don't, you, you think no, you still use I, the... I still think okay. we know that. So right. let's establish the run, and, and then if we establish the run, then we, we don't necessarily have to rely on the pass. I would say it's, it's not about Nebraska. This is our team. This is what we do, and we need to run the ball. And if we're able to run the ball... And, and get that really rolling, that opens up the pass. And if that is their weakness, we will definitely expose we'll have that. Yeah. All right, one of the things that I think sticks out for this game to me is pressure. Nebraska loves to bring it. I think we could see a full dose of some screens today. Absolutely. I think not only screens, which will be great, but let's keep the fast pace. I think Connor does better when, when we do the no huddle, when he's, you know, in the fast pace. And, and that's what I see him when he's at his best. What does it mean, TJ, when people say a, a football player has a high football IQ? Does it mean they're dumb or does it mean they're a thinker? Because I know Connor Cook's not dumb, but he's got a high football IQ. It, it's a completely different realm, if you will, where you know what your opponent's doing. Right. You have an, a football awareness. You have an idea of everything that's going on. Not necessarily X's and O's, but a truly there's 11, 10 guys on this field. Why don't I cut back to the left where there's nobody over there. That, just overstanding and soaking in the whole entire game is what that means. That's really good analysis on your part. Tico, their gap sound on defense. Sure. So this is a man against man, willpower against willpower. The Spartan offensive line, they're going to be in their gap. you got to move them. Yeah, you have to move them. We're big up front. They're big up front. It's good. They were pretty evenly matched up there. So it's going to come down to who wants it more, really. So if I hear you correctly, I th I, my mentality is use the pass to set up the run. Mm -hmm. I think you're calling for more of just a balanced attack. Well, you know, it just goes back to Michigan State. We mm -hmm. run the ball. And, and if we know we can pass and we have to down the road in the third or fourth quarter, let's do it. But let's establish the run. Let's show them who we are. And I, I would say we are one of the top teams in the country right now in ball possession, holding on to the ball. Let's not speed up the offense just yet. Let's go ahead and let's run what we're doing. Mm -hmm. take our time, and at the same time, that's keeping our quote-unquote defense that's young and not established yet off, off the, the field. field. Right. And that way when they come out, it's more of a pressure. If we can put points up, now the offense is forced to do something different. I could hear the three of us collectively shouting amens like a Baptist choir, though, <laughs> when we saw two different quarterbacks run the ball for touchdowns. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. I mean, all three of us sure. were like, giggity. You yep. Know? Yep. And, you know, with that being said, I, I think – we need to start putting in some packages with different quarterbacks coming in throughout the year. They have know? them. And, and if we play, if we have them, but we might not play. No, them. I agree. But I, that's what I'd like to see because th those guys can run the ball. I think it's fair to call this game a playoff elimination game for Michigan Good. State. They lose, they're not making the playoff. They could still win the Big Ten, but not win in the playoff. You know, I think I know every game from here on out is a playoff elimination. I mean, we can't lose a game if we expect to be in the playoff. So this is the one of many, and we start today. How much did the two of you look at a playoff in college football and wish you'd had it, TJ? I mean, it would have been great. It's almost not even in my brain that it was <laughs> trying to get to a bowl game and it was the playoff. I don't even right. the playoffs. You know, try to get to that, no clue. But now it, it changes the mentality of a college football player. That's big. Sure, I, I agree. I mean, when I played, you get down to the last season of the uh, the last game of the season, you're beat up, you're bruised, and you're thinking, wow, if I had 10 more games I had to play or five more, it'd be tough. You know, so it, you have to change your mindset in, in college football just like you do in the pros. Nebraska is one of the top jobs in college football. We all know that. I thought they were a great addition to the Big Ten. If you're one of the 13 other Big Ten teams, though, you know Nebraska is always going to have great facilities and great players. You just donate to the Keep Bowen Lincoln Fund, even if they win today, because he always costs them a game. I mean, sure. I, don't, I don't think that's unfair. No, no, it's, it's very fair. I mean, you, you donate to, to Nebraska and you donate to Michigan. So, I mean, that's what you do, absolutely. But, you he know, went there. He did. I did. He did. But that, yeah, yeah, I know, I agree. Sure. Your thoughts on the uh -huh. Pelini thing? Because, again, if they ever were to improve the coaching, the Big Ten's in trouble. You know, I, I don't want to say this, but you are 100% right. Nebraska has had a history of being very, very po big powerhouses. Yep. And right now, they're not necessarily forcing their power. Or some of us Michigan State Spartan teams are getting better. I agree. But plus, they have the players. They don't have the coaching. We'll be back with predictions next.
Hi, I'm Kevin Witkin, owner of Discount One Hour Signs. We've been proudly serving the Lansing area since 1979. We pride ourselves in producing the best signs at the best prices, fast. From traditional graphics, vehicle wraps, lighted signs, whatever your needs, we do it all. Remember, a business with no sign is a sign of no business. Discount Signs, Lansing's top sign shop since 1979. Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Video Vision 360. High octane, in the action, videography specializing in sports, entertainment, and adventure. And by Clauda Irish Pub. Clauda Irish Pub, home of the Guinness Perfect Pour. Hi, we're from Chi Omega, and you're watching Spartan Nation TV. Go Reef! This segment of Spartan Nation TV is brought to you by our good friends at Moneyball. Moneyball, it's the only way to ball. Good morning, welcome back to Spartan Nation TV. I'm your host, Hondo Carpenter with Legendary Michigan State and NFL running backs, Tico and TJ Duckett. We wanna give condolences on this show because this is very important to us. We love our staff and the people that make this show possible. One of our own, our director, Barrett Baxter, had a loss this week. We just wanna let him know he's in our thoughts. Right, guys? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Little inside joke there, folks. We love you, Barrett. We're yeah, praying for you. Much love, absolutely. much love. Much love for Barrett. <laughs> But we'll hope you get your man card back. <laughs> Guys, Tico, what's your prediction for today? <laughs> Three nothing. That's no, I'm just playing. Uh -huh. <laughs> just playing, just playing. Well, I look at today, um, I, I think it all rides on Connor Cook. You know, he's got to have a good day today. He's got to put some points. He's got to hook up with Lippitt. The defense is going to struggle a little bit with the running game. And uh, I look at a high-scoring game, 42-38. Mm, that's pretty good. I'm going to say it's going to be an evenly matched game. We're going to have some trouble on offense. We're going to have some success on offense, same as defense. It's going to come down to special teams. It's going to be 24-21. I agree a little bit with you, but in a little bit of a different direction. I think this game is simple. I think it's going to be two very good football teams with one very good coaching staff. But for Michigan State, that very game, good coaching staff is on their sidelines. I think Bo Pelini will make a mistake. The game will go to overtime, and Michigan State will win 34-31 after Nebraska kicks a field goal and the Spartans score a touchdown. Wow. One more big prediction. Overtime. Overtime. You know I love you. <laughs> and you know I love Amy Jo, your girl. Listen, okay? I won this tie last week on the show. I cannot keep this tie because it was a gift from the lovely Amy Jo. Oh, isn't, that and nice? isn't that nice? You cannot hurt a fellow Spartan. Aww. And I know she's going to kill you for this. So <laughs> you can have the tie back. Aww. Now, he did not ask me. But here's the thing that stinks. Had he won the steak and lobster, he would have given it back to me, but he would not have given it back to me in the form that I gave right, it to right, him. Right, right, Give me my time. <laughs> Thank you, sir. That's very nice. Man. Yeah, very nice All of you. Right. Quick right. prediction. Will Amir Abdullah go for 150 yards or more? No, he will not. Yes, he will. Wow. Nope. I say no. Last prediction. Is this, for Michigan State, a magic number? Can they win if he goes over 150? Um... Mm, I'm that's a, a tough no, one. No, they can't. If he goes on over 150, they won't win. They won't I win. think yeah. they can, but it's a it's, very, it's very it's slim. Gonna their, it's it's going to break mean, their spirit if I he does. Totally right, right. For all of us, and of course our buddy Barrett, keep him in your prayers. We'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Guests of Spartan Nation stay at Country Inn and Suites. Curtis. Curtis.